Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Mars. Today we're going to go over a list of mistakes I've found players make while playing Rise of Kings. Not all of these will apply to you, but I found them interesting and thought it would be good information to put out. Number one, investing in the arrow tower. These are not good buildings to invest into. The arrows that it costs to to do it isn't worth it, isn't worth the gems, and it's not going to help you win any battles, it's not going to kill off a ton of troops, its effect is very, very minimal. So trying to get these to a high, high level is not worth your time, it's not worth the resources or the gems. Number two not using heroes on your walls or putting terrible heroes on your walls. If you have no infantry in your castle and you're attacked and you have Rafi on the wall, is that going to be helpful? No. So know your castle, put heroes on the wall that's going to benefit your troops the most. So number three, is how you work with your jewels. There's two parts to this. One, not having a common theme between your jewels. Don't just put the most, the highest jewel in your armor. Stick to a certain troop type and actually work with them. The second part is focusing on your jewels and smashing jewels that you're not gonna use. I don't use your archers, so I smash them and then what I do is this is what a lot of people don't do that I do. I don't compose them into the highest level. I compose them into just level ones. And the reason why I do this is it gives me the highest success rate of getting uh, jewels that I actually will use. So that's something that you can consider doing. You don't have to do it that way. If you feel lucky that you'll get a one in four chance of what you want to get then go for it if you have two different jewel types that you're collecting then that's 50 percent chance that you'll get it but this way at least i know i will get some of the jewels that i want and then i can upgrade them to how to the jewels that i want in the future number four is not keeping your stats up with your castle if you are getting ahead of your research or your gear or anything else like that you might want to slow down on your on your castle building or whatever else you're working on to get your stats back up because if you're just a shell of a castle that's legendary one but still has under 200 percent stats or even more you're really lacking on that and you're going to get beat up by castles that are a lot smaller than you number five not doing your dailies. Dailies aren't just your daily tasks. They're also doing shrine, killing monsters, doing all those things that need to be done every single day. And most of those things that you need to do are on the t daily task list, but doing shrine and just getting all of those events that are going on done each day is going to pro progress you faster than anything else. Make sure you're killing monsters every single day. This is a mistake many players make, especially during those important times when the the harvest event is going on or one of those things that doubles your experience points or anything like that. You also get a lot of very valuable resources hunting monsters. Side note, the less troops you send to kill a monster, the less wounded you'll have from that. Farming during a KVK or kill event is a big no-no. You're not going to get more resources than the healing cost will be if you get caught. You have to farm a very long time to be able to make back up those resources. So it's not worth the cost. You're giving your competitors 
a leg up, which you don't want to do, and it's just not good for you. So don't. Encampments will create dead soldiers, not wounded. So if you're trying to prep for power event or just want to do a friendly tile battle with your friends, make sure you do it on a tile, not in an encampment. They will die and they will not be wounded and you will be a very sad panda. Be very careful on what you use your legendary medals on. Do not use them on battle on buildings that don't need to be upgraded. Legendary medals are one of the hardest things to get in the game and they're very expensive money wise and getting them through gyms or events they're very difficult to get a hold of so if you want to ever make it to legendary three or just advance your castle you need to prepare yourself to only use it on buildings that need those legendary medals you need to learn to use the skill sets They're very important, and many players do not use them. You only have to spend 200 gems to get that. At this point, 200 gems, if you're going to kill off a lot of monsters, it's worth it to go to your assist and switch it over. You're going to be able to kill a lot more monsters and use up less of your items to kill those monsters and you're going to be able to do it faster this is very important in the monster hunting event and gathering event in kvk not enough people focus their skills onto battle development and and assist you need to do that to be able to really use all of your skill points for what you're trying to do because that's very important So focus on that, and you'll go much further. Focus in on one or two troop types. Too many players try and spread themselves out. You're not going to be able to get what you need to get out of your troops if you're only focusing, you're not focusing in on one or two troop types. Now, if you have the resources to get all of the research done, and get your gear fully loaded up, the top four, that's great. And you're gonna run a four troop type dispatch on when you attack. Go for it. But most of us won't be able to do that. And that is a mistake most players make. They try and spread it out and they become very mediocre or not even good at all across the board because they're not focusing. Part of the success that many players have is they focus in on a troop type and then have a a secondary troop type that helps back them up. So if that is infantry and archers or infantry and, and siege or infantry and cavalry, go for it. Notice that I said infantry in all four of those. Also, when you get to the legendary tower, don't try and spread yourself out there either. Stick to a troop type and you'll go a lot further and you'll get a lot more out of your legendary tower. Those stones get very expensive and it becomes very difficult to increase the stats. Make sure you max your hospitals. Max them as far as you can I can't tell you especially earlier on how many castles my team has come across that have very little hospital room and they regret it you at least want a full dispatch worth of hospital beds that way if you urgent care and activate that ability you'll be able to get all your troops back that you attacked. That would be what I suggest. And I find too many players don't keep up with their hospitals. Two mistakes I find players doing all the time is not using the magic tower and also running the Ashen Shrine at the end of the day 
right before the clock flip happens. If your run in Ashen Shrines goes into the other day, you're using up your run for that other day as well. So don't do that. Make sure that you do the Ashen Shrine before the clock flip. Get it done before the clock flip happens. Otherwise, you're wasting a whole entire run that you could have done the following day. Also, the Magic Tower has a lot of great buffs that you're not utilizing. There's Monster Hunt. You get the increase in attack and increase in defense and adding in rally size. There's just so much that you can do. And make sure that your alliance is using these in opportune times. Last one. Something to pay attention to. Most people don't pay attention to this, but the skill shop refreshes a new batch every eight hours. So even if you don't want to spend more gems to look at more shards, you can come back eight hours later and they'll have a new batch for you. A lot of players don't utilize the skill shop enough. Yes, it's very tedious because you have to buy many of the you know, infantry defense pages, as an example, a lot of these pages and books to actually see something come out of it. But in the long term, it's something that's going to increase your stats and that's extremely valuable. So utilize the skill shop and utilize the refresh so that you get that free look at a next batch of skills. Well, that's going to wrap up my video. I hope it was helpful. I don't know, I think that I might do a few more of these kind of videos of making lists and seeing if I can help anybody with at least just one of the issues that they might have be they might be having. And so tell me if you like it. Tell me if there's a, a subject matter that you would like for me to work on and uh, get that out to you. And maybe we can create some more videos that you will find entertaining and helpful. Well, this is Mars. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side.